Hello YouTube and welcome to Chess Does Stuff. For today's video, I'll do a full LCD panel and display cable replacement guide for the Lenovo ThinkPad T580, which is pretty much identical to the P52S minus the Nvidia Quadro GPU. I'll also include tips I wish I knew the first time I replaced my LCD panel. I shared my experience with the power efficient Inulux N156HCG-GT1 panel in the ThinkPad subreddit a few weeks ago and met some concerns about compatibility given its slightly different plug location. I'll address these concerns as well. To save your time, I'll have the replacement guide go first before talking about the panel selection and purchase process and my general experience with this new LCD panel after having it installed for almost a month. Without further ado, let's get to it. Unlock the two bottom latches and slide the external battery out. Log into your BIOS settings and disable the internal battery. Doing so should immediately cause your ThinkPad to turn off. Press the power button a few times to make sure power has been entirely disabled. To remove the bezel, start from the upper corner of one side and work your way down. If it's your first time to do this on your ThinkPad, you may have to deal with adhesive on the inner edges. Do the same on the other side. From the top corners, work your way towards the center. It might get a little stubborn as you get closer to the camera, but wiggling it a little usually does a trick. With the upper half of the bezel off, run your finger across the inner edge of the lower half to release the adhesive. To release the lower corners, pull each one of them to the side and lift. Repeat on the other side and snap the bezel off. With the laptop open flat on your desk, remove the four corner screws holding the display panel on. Newer ThinkPads no longer have these screws, their panels are just held on with adhesive. Flip the panel over to reveal the connection port behind it. Be careful not to accidentally pull the cable while repositioning the panel. Since my panel was installed just a few weeks before recording this guide, the tape holding the display plug in was very stubborn. Carefully undo the tape and disconnect the display plug. Some plugs, like on the 40 pin cable for my old 4K panel, are held on by a flip up metal wire lock, so you'll also have to watch out for that. I'll now show you how to replace the EDP cable. If you're trying to install a panel that uses the same pin format as your old one, there's no need to watch this part so feel free to skip over to the panel reinstallation part of this video, which I'll label with a timestamp. If you enjoy hearing my voice, then carry on without skipping. Before taking off the lower shell, remove the cap beside the left side USB-C port. On the T580 and P52S, there are 8 screws holding the lower cover on. Go ahead and loosen all of them. To remove the lower shell, I usually start from one of the rear corners and work my fingernail to the front. And then do the same on the other side. Once the two front corners are released, work your way towards the center. In this case, that part just popped off. Maybe I've done this too much. Going back to the rear, remove the narrow part holding on to the rear edge of the frame.
With all the edges off, slide the cover a little rearwards and lift it up. Sometimes one of the screws are still holding on a little, so watch out for that. And now, on to cable replacement. Lift the tab lock up and slide the display plug off. Don't forget to push the tab back down so it doesn't snag while you're working on your ThinkPad. Open your laptop 90-ish degrees like so. Before loosening the left hinge, unravel the antenna wire to create some slack. It usually helps to take some photos before doing anything, so you have something to refer to as you put things back. Remove the three hinge screws. Turn your ThinkPad around and unroute the display cable. Lift the left side up and remove the display cable. Do the reverse and install the new display cable. Check the other side every now and then to make sure that the hinge or any of the plastic bits aren't resting on the cable. If you do it correctly, you should be able to turn the display cable in place, even with the hinge fully seated. Reinstall the three hinge screws that you removed earlier. Reroute the antenna cable. You can refer to the pictures you took earlier if you don't remember which slots it should go into. As final check before proceeding further, try to floss the display cable back and forth. It should be as free as it is in the video. Once you're done with the hinge, get the bottom up and reinstall the EDP cable. One by one, get the wire back into different slots. If the wire ends up too twisted, you can open the laptop and floss the wire back and forth while rotating it in the opposite direction. Place the lower cover back on and press down the perimeter of your ThinkPad. The thin part on the rear edge usually needs a little more attention. Once that's done, press down on the middle part to engage the clips there. Tighten the 8 screws on the lower shell. Make sure to turn with light force first until you're sure that the screw threads have seated properly. Now we move on to panel reinstallation. I'll dive into greater detail on the Inlux panel upgrade towards the end of this video. But for now, I want you to take note of the factory installed foam tiles on the upper half of the display shell and how their position clears the rear board on the Inlux panel. Plug the connector into the port behind the LCD panel. If your cable comes with an additional wire lock, don't forget to engage it afterwards. Stick the tape on if your cable comes with it. Flip the display panel over and line the mounting holes up with the locators on each corner.
reinstall the four screws that hold the display panel on. You may have to loosen these and reposition the panel as you center the display to the bezel later on. Reroute the display cable onto the locating channels. I didn't follow factory routing here since the Inlux panel's port was mounted much higher than the 4K BOE panel's port was. Reactivate the internal battery by supplying power to the charge port. In my case, I just briefly attached a USB-C power bank. Turn your ThinkPad on to check if the display functions as it should. This part seems to take longer when you change panel resolutions, as was the case when I first replaced the 4K panel with this full HD one. Power off your ThinkPad the moment you see the LCD panel working correctly. I waited too long here and ended up getting into system recovery the next time I booted it up. Now for the final step, bezel reinstallation. The key tip here is to address the clips on the bottom edge of the bezel first before doing anything else. These clips are visible when you have your laptop lying at a 90 degree angle with the screen facing up. Holding the lower part of the bezel opening to prevent the adhesive from sticking onto the screen, slide it downward to fully seat the clips. Once that's done, turn your ThinkPad around and press your fingers along the bottom of the bezel to seat all the clips. Then do the same to each side of the bezel. If your bezel still has adhesive, press the edges of the opening down your new display panel. Finally, run your finger along the upper edge of the bezel to finish the job. Remember the quick clip I showed you earlier showing how the factory pad behind the display panel just clears the Inelux panel circuit board? One of the concerns raised in the comments on my Reddit post was that the higher plug location on the Inelux panel compared to the old BOE one, or really any of the other panels that the T580 shipped with, would cause the EDP cable connector to hit the shell behind it. Fortunately, this wasn't the case, and the connector port stayed low enough to clear the foam tiles I showed you. Had it been an issue, the easy solution would have been to trim the foam bits a little. If you haven't picked up on it from my earlier mentions, my T580 actually came with an ultra-high definition BOE panel from the factory. Was I nuts to downgrade from 4K resolution to plain Jane Full HD? Well, hear me out. After prolonged office work, the text on my old 4K panel would start looking squiggly. The pixels were so fine that my eyes would feel like a camera desperately hunting for focus and constantly going under and over its ideal focal length. I was certain it wasn't my eyes, since this didn't happen with my old 2K display equipped ThinkPad W550S and Full HD MSI GE72 that I'm editing this video on. Not even with a 27 inch LG 4K display behind it. One Reddit user pointed out PWM flickering as a possible cause of my eye strain. Whichever it was, change could only be for the better. Since I was fine with the full HD resolution on the MSI and only did office work on the T580, I wanted to switch to a 1080p panel for the potential battery life improvement. A lot of good things have been said about the Inlux panel upgrade for the smaller T480, so I wanted to get the 15.6 inch version of that. Heading over to panellook.com, I did a custom search for a 15.6 inch 1920x1080 Inelux panel with an EDP interface. Among the results, two panels had HCG in their model numbers, just like the preferred panel upgrade for the T480. Heading over to AliExpress and seeing how more sellers seem to offer the N156HCG-GT1 over the one with the GQ1 suffix, I went with it after confirming similar outer dimensions with my old BOE NV156QUM-N44 panel and similar socket locations on the back of the panel. I later learned that the panel with the GQ1 suffix has its EDP socket located as low as the original BO panels is. 
but I was already happily using the panel I purchased by then. Before heading over to the conclusion, I'd like to take some time to share some buying tips for anyone who wants to follow suit. Whether you're looking to buy from AliExpress, eBay, or some other site, a lot of sellers out there list the model number you're looking for and end up shipping a compatible model instead of the exact one you wanted to buy. You can usually avoid this by chatting or messaging the seller and stating that you just returned the panel you purchased from another seller because you didn't get the exact model you wanted. This kind of gives them a heads up not to do a good old switcheroo. Aside from the reviews on their product listings, most sites would also allow you to view seller ratings, and you can usually get an idea of whether the seller you're looking to buy from has a track record of shipping exact models or switching them out. For the T580 and P52S, you would need stick-on brackets to have the new panel ready for mounting. Don't forget to ask vendors for these as well. The seller I purchased from included them for free. Now that I've had the Inelux panel installed for a month, was all the effort worth it? The prime reason for my LCD panel change was eye strain and I'm happy to say that my eyes no longer hurt after doing office work on my ThinkPad for hours on end. I used to need about 10 minutes of post-work cooldown before regaining enough of my distance vision back to drive safely. That is no longer the case these days. The Inelux panel has a much better 1500 is to 1 contrast ratio compared to the old BOE panels on 1000 is to 1. It also has marginally better 100% sRGB color coverage versus the old ones 99%. Maximum brightness sits at 400 nits, exactly like the popular 14 inch screen upgrade for the T480. One unexpectedly huge benefit I got from moving onto this panel was a huge bump in battery life. The maximum backlight consumption is lowered by almost 2 watts. The display power consumption, on the other hand, is lowered by over 1 watt. Both of these combine to produce aggregate maximum power consumption of 3.09 watts for the Inlux panel, which is much lower than the 4K display 6.6 .6 watts. Now, a 3.5 watt difference doesn't sound like much, but paired with the reduced GPU load, the idle battery life of my T580 jumped from 10 hours to 17 hours. That is a huge plus for me. All of these benefits considered, yes, the panel and effort were very much worth it. Thank you for staying until the end. I hope you found this video informative and useful for the project you face. If you want to see more of these, please do feel free to hit like or subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate that and promise not to spam your feed with clickbaity thumbnails and the like. See you next time!